There are different ways to accomplish scanning confocal microscopy, which is a way of taking high resolution microscopy images. And let's contrast a standard technique and the technique that we're going to encounter in class when we read a journal club. So the standard technique is what I'd call raster scanning. We might also call that mirror scanning, as you'll see in a minute. The essential thing for confocal microscopy to begin is that you have to have a virtual pinpoint from which your light emerges. And you typically accomplish that by having a slit somewhere. So let's build our system from a place where there's light emerging this way from a physical slit. And we'll just draw that conceptually as a place where you've got a block here. So this is an entrance pinhole. So this would be, if viewed on face on, would be a circle with a little hole in the middle like that. I said slit earlier, I really meant a, a pinhole. One way or another, you have arranged for light to pass through this pinhole. It's not really important what the light source was up here or what optics you used in order to get light going through this pinhole, but we've got a point here where there's a spot we can draw and all of the light seems to be coming from that small spot. That's one of the two points that are going to be confocal in this confocal microscope. So now we take that light and I'll sketch us as having a collimated beam. And then we need to pass it through a beam splitter. And the beam splitter's job here is to allow us to send light down to the sample and then bring it back and head it towards the detector. So the light will continue on past the beam splitter. And then it's going to encounter the scanning device for this raster scanning. So I'll draw that as a mirror. And this mirror is going to be able to rock in this direction. So it can twist back and forth. It may also twist in another dimension out, uh, outside of the plane of this page, but we can get the idea of scanning from this one dimensional picture. So the light is going to bounce off of this, perhaps in this direction. It will come to another lens. And then this light is brought to focus and we might have a tissue sample somewhere in the path of that focus. So here's the light coming down to focus right there. Let's say it's inside of some tissue specimen, which I'm going to draw like this. I'm intentionally having that spot be below the surface of the tissue here. Then beef, as we twist the mirror, I'll draw in a dashed line that the light could come to focus at a different position down here. I'll mark that in some different color just for clarity. And there could be some third uh, dashed line going upwards. If I raster scan in the other direction, and that might come to focus up a little bit higher. Like that. So three different mirror positions correspond to three different spots on the sample. In general, we are raster scanning this way. So we scan the point to different positions. And that scanning is being accomplished by the scanning mirror. Okay, now the light comes back from whichever one of these three points that it has gone to. Light emerges from that spot and comes back, hits that mirror at whatever tilt angle it is, and heads right back in the direction that it was headed. So it's been de-scanned. And then that de-scanned light 
is going to go into its own lens and it's then going to get focused down and then this light comes to a focus here and we're going to place another pinhole right here this of course we would call the exit pinhole and the job of the exit pinhole is to reject out of plane scattering or I'll just call it out of plane light and what I mean by that is that remember that this light is traveling into a tissue this whole region here is tissue and light can bounce back from the top surface of the tissue some light can go into the tissue and come back from 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 deeper depths and only the light scattered right from where the light is trying to focus is light that's going to get back through this pinhole with high efficiency light that scatters from a little bit higher photons that are trying to get to that point and scatter before they get there they'll come back but they will not be in focus on the pinhole and so they're larger defocused spot size will a lot of those photons will hit the pinhole uh, material and that's also true of a photon that passes through this focus and scatters off of a spot below the surface of the tissue even low, deeper than the focal spot it will also come back light scattering from that location will also travel back through the sample but will also be out of focus at the pinhole and a lot of that light will be blocked so only the light at a particular depth gets through the pinhole that's the essence of confocal microscopy and then that light continues on and once it's there you know where it came from in the tissue so you can just put it into a single pixel detector like this we often draw a little wire coming off of it so this little detector here detects the light and we will so I'll label that as a point detector so that's method number one raster scanning let me now copy this entire picture over to a uh, second place and then we'll think about what's different for a second technique, which we're going to call spectral encoding. So now I'll go ahead and make that copy. We're still going to have a light source that passes through an entrance pinhole. We're still going to bring that light down towards the sample. But now we are not going to use a mirror. So I'm going to get rid of the mirror and everything downstream of that so no more mirror we still got some tissue but we're going to replace that mirror with a static object a grating so here's my grating and that grating is going to have one a mirror a zero order mirror bounce that bounces off somewhere in this direction that we're not going to worry about but it also diffracts light into some first order and let me draw the light diffracting off different colors will go in different directions so the first thing that we have to emphasize about this new situation is that the light source must be what I'll call broadband it has to have significant amounts of spectrum such that when it bounces off of the grating the light spreads out into a significant cone of angles so that's different from what we had in the first case we made no rules about what the spectral bandwidth of this light source was because the whole system was sending all the all the light in the same direction regardless of what color it would be these colors here were just for illustration of three points now we have a rule though that this light source can't just be monochromatic otherwise the bounce off of the grating isn't going to do it for us what we want so let's think about three colors of light the center wavelength of this light I'll make in green since it's the middle of the visible spectrum so it might bounce off in this direction like that and it could come into a big lens it would go into a big lens like this 
Here's the tissue surface, like that. The light comes in and focuses. And there's a spot. Now the thing that's going to be different here is that we might have a longer wavelength that diffracts at a slightly different angle. It might go up here and it might come to a focus somewhere more like that. And blue light might diffract this direction and come to a focus like that. So that's a big change from what we had over here. This grating is not moving. So that's different from the mirror, which has to move in time. We've got three different colors of light focused to three different locations. And what we would say here is that the color encodes position. That's not the first time we've seen that this semester, that depending what color of light is coming back towards my exit pinhole, that tells me where that light came from in terms of the scan direction here. So that's different from what we had before. Now let's see, as all of this light back scatters, it's going to hit the grating again, it's going to re retrace its path, and it's going to go right back to where it was before. So again, it's been de-scanned, just like it was last time. We still have all of the stuff associated with the exit pinhole. We're still going to send all of these colors of light represented in red, but corresponding to a, a broad spectrum back through the exit pinhole. The exit pinhole has the same job that it had before, which is to take all of this light and only let the light scattering from this particular depth efficiently get through the pinhole. But what we're going to do differently now is we're going, to, we're going to collimate that light again. And we're going to have it hit another grating, right? The information about position has been encoded in color. We now have to spread that light out in color so that we can read it out. So here's another grating. Grating number two. And if we play the same game that we did before, we'll have an, a mirror bounce that bounces off here that we're not going to draw. But then we've got light diffracted into the first order. Once again, we've got green sort of heading downwards like that. We would have uh, blue perhaps going off like that, and red perhaps coming off like that. When that goes through a big lens, it's the same story we had over here. And then we will recover our red spot, green spot, and blue spot. We now can place that on an array of pixels like this, an array detector. And depending upon where the pixel lands, that tells us how much light there was at this red, green, and blue spot corresponding to this red, green, and blue spot in the tissue. So different colors of light interrogated different parts of the tissue and then are then brought in that same spatial arrangement onto an array detector. And you get your information about reflectivity from multiple places in the tissue. So that's a little different. We ha note we have, instead of a point detector, we now have an array detector. So that's different. These are the two main things that are different about the system, is that instead of a scanning mirror, you have a static grating. And instead of a point detector, you have a grating spreading light out to an array detector. So this is a clever, different way of doing scanning confocal microscopy with no mechanical moving parts. You get the same information about reflectivity of the tissue at a particular section depth at different locations along a line, except in one case you had to scan a mirror to move along the line and get the data at different points in time. Here, very analogously to the way OCT uh, can be more efficient if you 
measure the spectrum in of multiple wavelengths rather than get all the data at one point. You can find out about multiple positions all at once by making a bunch of measurements at different wavelengths.